All the signals we've seen up to now are called absolute signals, which means the red stop indication is absolute. Do not pass unless instructed by the dispatcher. The railroad doesn't play around here. Passing a red absolute signal can get a crew fired or at least relieved immediately. Ignoring an absolute signal can result in a massive train wreck. Absolute signals are most often identified by the lack of a number or letter plate. They are usually at turnouts or switches, but they don't have to be. They're also called home signals on some railroads. These, however, are non-absolute, most often automatic block or ABS signals, and they have slightly different rules attached to them. On the seaboard system, these distant, intermediate, or ABS signals are identified with a number plate, a P marker, or a G marker. Rarely, they can also have a C marker or an illuminated S. ABS signals, unlike absolute or home signals, display a restricted proceed as their most restrictive indication. A red on these signals indicates proceed at restricted speed. You can pass me, but you've got to reduce your speed to be able to stop in half the range of your vision to avoid any obstruction, fouled switch ahead, or another stop signal, and in no case faster than 15 mph. The yellow and green on ABS signals carries the same indications as absolute signals. Like sensors in the roadway for traffic signals, most ABS signals are actuated by a train entering that block or the block before. In general, since they are automatic, they are not dispatcher controlled, and that's why they don't show up on your ATCS screen. Some ABS signals are permissive. In this example, a local is switching a tank car terminal and entering the main line repeatedly. Part of his train is out on the main line and is on the circuit. The train is approaching the block and the block ahead is empty, so the signal is green. When the engine comes out past the signal and into the block, the signal drops to red. But when the engine backs down onto the spur and exits the block, the signal returns to green. It's all automatic. Milepost A637.9 on the CSX A line just north of Jacksonville, Florida. Note the number plate below the lights, 6379. That identifies the signal, but it also coincides exactly with the milepost location. This ABS signal is named SUTEL for the road crossing nearby. But looking northward, it's actually the distant to Densmore crossover and turnout. The number two, the track signal on the right, is showing a high green. Clear signal, proceed. Over on the number one track, the signal is showing a yellow. Approach, proceed prepare to stop at the next signal ahead. In seaboard system territory, anything other than a red almost always means a train is coming. In this case, we've got two. The green is for empty hopper train T-102, northbound out of Palatka, Florida, returning to Warrior Coal Mine in Manitou, Kentucky. The yellow approach on number one is for a yard job up from Moncrief Yard. This switcher is heading to the Duval ramp via Dinsmore connection. He gets the approach because he's going through a series of turnouts at the next signal. The approach tells him to be ready to stop as he enters that routing, the next signal. The bottom lights here at Sutel facilitate a flashing green and coupled with a yellow above give an approach limited, limited speed to cross over at Dinsmore or a steady green on the southward side to give an approach medium into the Amtrak station to our south. About 230 miles south on the same piece of railroad is the intermediate signal at Dover, Florida. This is another ABS but with a G plate below. The G indicates grade because this block is in the middle of a long uphill climb from the south. The signal protects the block but the G lets a train crew know that if this aspect is red, they can keep pulling on by after reducing to restricted speed, thereby avoiding stopping a heavy train on a hill from which it might be hard or impossible to get going again. 
Interesting to note that on the back side of this signal, it carries a P-plate, making this a permissive signal for southbounds headed downhill. A few miles away stands the distant to Winston Pass, more approach lit signals. These are searchlights, but they give the same indications as the color lights at Dover. The P-plate tells us this is a permissive signal. The most restrictive indication it can display is restricted proceed. Even if it's all red, a train can still pass here at restricted speed until it reaches the next signal or the end of signal territory. This goes for any signal with a number plate, a P plate, or a G plate. The signal lights up when the approaching train enters the circuit. Less than a minute later, it's Amtrak 92, northbound from its Tampa stop. knocks it down, and just as quickly the signal goes back to sleep. On the same A-line a few miles south is the distant signal to Cherry Siding near Plant City, another approach-lit ABS signal. We know it's an ABS because of that number plate below the signal head. Many of these intermediate signals are approach-lit, that is, they're dark most of the time until a train enters the adjoining block. When they light up long enough for the train to pass, then they go dark again. No one's ever explained the reasoning for this to me. I've always assumed it was to save electricity or avoid confusion for motorists on parallel roads, or to discourage local yahoos with BB guns and firearms from shooting them out. Train 0825, normally an S-line job, is for some reason taking the A-line back to Tampa's Yeoman Yard today, and he has no train with him. Just like at Winston, the signal goes dark again not long after the train passes. Here's one that's an interlocked ABS signal. We're on the Palmetto subdivision south of Tampa, Florida at the Alafaya River Bridge. The span is an electric turnkey drawbridge, and that signal is interlocked to the bridge mechanism. The C marker makes this signal a stop and check. When a train approaches the signal circuit, the signal will light green if the bridge is lined and locked, or red if the bridge is open or anything is out of alignment for the train's safe crossing. If red, the crew must stop the train and go check the bridge for proper alignment, then proceed at restricted speed. Drawbridge signals can be handled differently in different places according to timetable instructions. Ask any veteran railroad engineer the distance needed to stop an 8,000 foot freight train and he or she'll tell you it ain't easy and it ain't fast. It can take one mile to get a high-balling freight train down to a safe stop. So, you need signals that warn you about signals ahead you can't see. These are called distant signals, and although they are interlocked with home signals, they are still part of the ABS family, the automatics. This is the distant signal to Zephyr Hills. The control point, or absolute signal, is two miles ahead of us to the south. Note the P on the mast, telling us this is a permissive signal, and it's another approach lit, coming on only when a train has entered the block. The indication is a clear, telling the crew to proceed at max authorized train speed. That's a good thing because you can imagine how long it would take to get this loaded K427 ethanol train stopped if he had to hit the brakes. If the absolute signal down at Zephyr Hills was red, this distance signal would likely show a yellow approach, telling him to be ready to stop at Zephyr Hills. Going the other way, this is also the distant to Vitus, which is two miles to our north. Vitus is the junction of two major subdivisions and the bottom of a four mile long super siding. Here at the distant to Lac Lusa, on CSX's Florida S-Line, this signal protects the signal behind us, the north end of Lac Lusa siding. Should the dispatcher line a train into that siding, then this distant signal three miles away would likely drop to a yellow approach, letting the crew know that the next signal ahead is also an approach, an approach medium, or even a red. In our case, this signal is only protecting the next block north, and it's completely clear, so the northbound Tropicana juice train is highballing.
at Lock Lusa, Florida. This is Danny Harmon, out.